If you're tired and frustrated of trying to get your mod to work for FS22, then this is the video for you. This video is going to piggyback on a lot of my other videos I've made recently. So if you haven't watched Make Your First Mod, this video right here, go watch that before you watch this one because that'll give you an idea of how to make your mod disk, how to set up a structure your mod folder, and get everything going because I'm going to assume in this video that you've watched that. Special shout out to Alex Ka for making this 3D model for Halloween, but I found it and I'm making this thing for FS22 and showing you how I did that. So let's dive right into the video here. So here we are with a beautiful model, Alex, beautiful, absolutely great. Uh, we have a couple of things. One, it's all together in one chunk. Granted, it has all of its materials so we can easily separate all the parts, chrome, uh, the plastics, rubber, all that stuff. Uh, but the UV map is, it's, it's confusing right now. Uh, we're going to dive into this, break it all into chunks, and that big glob of mess will be a lot easier to look at here momentarily. Now we're just going to right click here and separate everything by materials. This is going to break it all down into individual chunks. If you notice on the right hand side, every piece that is the same material is now part of the same model, which is makes it way easier to play around with. As you can see here, he's already got it UV mapped to a image and it's the Halloween image, which is really cool. But as as I notice this, we're going to run into some issues if we try to uh, make a UV shaded map for this because we're going to have some overlap. So as much as I wanted to keep this cool texture, I'm not going to be able to. So essentially, we're going to go through and make a quick ambient occlusion map so we can what I call poor man UDMI it and make it look pretty to a point. So let's go through and make an image really fast. I am using the old blender 2.79. If you are using a newer blender, it's the same process is just a different interface. Next, I'm setting up my blender to actually do an ambient occlusion. I go to my world tab and I tap on ambient occlusion, environmentals, go down to fallout, change that to 0.25, and then I boost my samples up to 10. From there, we're gonna go to the picture one and click on bake, click on ambient occlusion, click on clear, click normalize. I change that to, I think I'm actually gonna do that to a one. Now that that's all done, we're gonna hit bake and watch this thing. This is like my test run to see if all the faces are messed up, they're facing the right way. And we're gonna see exactly what's wrong with this model in about two point, oh, look at that. Look at that, you see how it's uh, basically printing the image twice? It's because there's faces that are overlapped over each other. So we're gonna have to do some fixing here or remapping because unfortunately I don't think we're gonna be able to use that cool Halloween texture. We're gonna have to remap this whole thing. So super bum, not gonna be able to use that, but we're gonna prep this thing to remap all the faces and get it ready, make sure everything's on point because it's already broken up into itty bitty little faces. So let's now unwrap the bad boy. Right click, smart unwrap, give it a little bit of a margin here. I'm gonna uncheck stretched bounds, but and then hit OK. She's unwrapped, and now we're ready to re-ambient occlusion this and see if it turns out a little bit better. As this thing's finishing baking up here, oh look at that! That looks a lot better, ten times better. Uh, we're already running into a couple of issues though because there's some old decals, and even though that's transparent the blender doesn't know that so it thought it would give itself a shadow so we're going to pull that out of there rebake it move that basically out of the way i like moving stuff to a different page just so i can leave it there if i want to work on it in the future and then rebake this and get rid of that little spot sometimes when you're baking and you've already baked it once and you got to bake it again and it's not changing the image uh, like right here i have a dark spot that i need so i'm actually going to hit save on the image and then after I hit save, I'm gonna hit reload and it should fill it how you need it. 
Next, we're going to talk about materials and what Giants does and does not like. It does not like when you import in objects with the same color of a material. So the generic is this generic white. So I like to change all my models just a little bit off of a different shade. Otherwise, when you go to import it in, the same material properties may get applied to your models. So if you import in a bunch of stuff and you're like, hey, why is that texture applying to that one? It may be because it has the same color or material or it's sharing the same material information and this is how you'd fix that is you just give it a new name and you make sure the color is way different than the original now the interior on this thing is kind of crap but uh it gives us something to do in future videos is add all the little cool decor because this goal of this tutorial just to get this thing in the game and drivable so if you wanted to you could separate out all these parts and make the door open like that just takes more time, more effort, all that fun stuff from you and kind of challenging at times, but it is plausible in most cases with your mods. You just got to break apart all these individual faces if you wanted to do that. Now, as cool as these tires are, I don't want to use them. And there's a lot of parts that are attached to the tires that we have to separate out from the body because we want to use some in-game tires for this first mod. We may make some future videos on some custom tires, but just to get in the basics and get your model in there, we're gonna go around and strip out all the parts from the chrome, the plastic, whatever's attached to the tires and the body. They need to be separated so these objects can move freely if you were going to be using the tires. So that's basically what I'm doing right here is separating out the tires and all the thousands of parts attached to it. About three hours later, we finally get all the tires and we're gonna move them to a different screen. So we just have the body to work on so we can put our own tires in here. This isn't gonna have any fancy gizmo gadget steering thing just normal tires and i saved them on this screen just in case i wanted to use them later on they're there they're available to do what we need to do so let's dive back into this bad boy so now we got our model we got our ao map for the body and we could a export it into a paint program like substance painter and make really cool textures but we're going to keep it simple here and i'm going to make a duplicate of it i'm going to send it to another screen this is just in case you mess up so now we have this duplicate. We're gonna prep this for putting it in game by UV mapping it to the UDMI. And there is some pieces on here that I don't necessarily want to be all one color. So I'm gonna go through and pick out the individual things like this Dodge right here. I would like that to be Chrome. So in order to do that, I gotta go through and actually individually select those faces. You can use the L key to select majority that's not always going to work but most of the time if the faces are connected it will and then I just go through make another material I'm going to rename that like steel or something like that or chrome and this is just so I can separate it out when I get ready to do the full UDMI the most challenging part now is going to have to be separating this back door from the model and that is going to be a whole lot of clicking and clicking and clicking faces so we're going to zip through that part you're going to have to do that you won't i wish you could just fast through fast forward through this part but it comes with the territory now i'm pretty sure i have all the parts selected pretty sure it's always hard to tell but i'm gonna separate it by selection and now i should have this fancy back door in order to set it at its right pivot point i'm going to select these two faces over here and these two faces over here because the center point would be right in the middle of where i want it to, to bend then reset its origin and now the bad boy should be able to rotate up and down now sometimes in your models you're going to have little broken faces or just things that aren't there because they weren't expecting you to use it in farm sim and you can make your own faces just by selecting the line between the other lines. So say I wanted to make a face right there, but there's a faster way. I select that line and then I select the line directly across from it and then I'll hit F and it'll make a face for me. Now, unfortunately, we've already UV mapped this and it's gonna mess up our whole thing, but it's kind of hidden and I really don't care. So we're just gonna leave that. It's not gonna mess up anything unless you really look at it. Now I'm going to break it up into easy chunks. So these are all the parts that I want to be color selectable. And I'm doing it this way so I can easily reverse select everything else and make it metal or plastic or whatever I choose to make those colors. But I go around the whole model, just click an L, 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 tons of L's. All right, now I assign that material to C1 so we can color select that when we want. Let's move on to the other ones, such as like chrome 
and rubber and plastic and those other things you would see on a vehicle besides this one straight cutter. Everything's one model. I just hit separate by material and then now I'll be able to UV map very quickly each section, highlight it, press C0 and then I'll find the next one I want to do such as this wood. I want to do wood but I'm going to make my own wood so I hit C2 and then we'll move on to the next one. From here you're just going to go through and UV map all the parts and pieces that you want to make different colors and whatnot. And then once we get to that point, we'll be able to either edge split it or auto smooth it and import it into an i3D and see how beautiful it looks. My next step that I do is I actually, once I get everything UV mapped, I delete all the materials and then I create a new material, just whatever name that is. So this is a, a B series. So I just go in through and make one material name because it's all UV mapped and I don't need multiple materials. You'll have to decide multiple textures. It's a pain in the butt. Just this is the way that I do it. So we're going to UV map the tailgate that will now bring us into our i3D exporters where we can set some settings up here so we don't have to click it a whole bunch when we get in there. We'll go to attributes, unclick static and all that. If any of these are checked for you, uncheck them unless you're needing those but we'll go down here and we'll make sure that these two are clicked at least we'll set a clip distance of like 300 that's how far you can see it make sure it can receive and cast shadows we'll hit apply selected with everything selected we got to create an export name now when i'm very first exporting i like to do this method instead of using the little widgets they give us because it, it seems to work better so i'll just create a name and then make sure you click selection only because if you have a big folder it'll export everything and take forever so we'll create this i3d file here and then open this bad boy up in giants holy cow there it is and we have no really no errors once you save this most of the the silly stuff will go away in a future video we're gonna have to make a better ao map because this one isn't green so it's gonna make everything chrome and real dirty but it is working as you can see the outline of the dodge there clearly highlights where it needs to be dark at well, that's nifty that's cool let's start applying some shaders and some normals so we can actually see the, what the textures do and from here we got to apply a tangent because anytime you start applying normals and you won't see the great details that giants offers in their shaders if you don't have a normal installed even using the stock in game one works absolutely perfect for this oh we got a shader installed now now we got our we're looking for color mask sometimes it hides from me and you can see all the different things that we uv mapped to where we can go through and start tweaking with the colors but i'm not a huge fan of that chrome at all that didn't turn out very good compared to the other the other metals so i think i'm going to redo that from chrome to a different color i now got a whole bunch of cool colors oh, she looks pretty right but we're gonna have to export her out and uh go through and redo the chrome because I don't think the chrome looks very good at all I don't like it and we have a couple of things to fix with the back and start importing in all this junk that isn't here so let's jump back into blender and get that thing fixed the nice thing about blender is we can open it back up and we can easily select the parts that we want to re UV map and we will select them down here in the UV mapper and we can use the little arrows with the UV mapping tools to move them around and we want the bumpy we want it to look a little bit more bumpy and there we go got her back in and that looks 10 times better to me at least you guys may have different opinions but I got my wood in there and now it's gonna spend some time just importing all the other objects in this exact same way off camera so we can get started in the next part all right so this thing came with some stock textures for lights so we're actually going to use his textures that came with this and but we're going to have to make them glow so in order to make them glow we got to get back in the old blender and i'll show you how to do this with them essentially they're already uv mapped on here we're just going to need to move them a little bit and also what's called vertex paint which is a option where in most cases you can have the object select and hit V and it'll go right into vertex paint mode. And then you can select your color on this little color wheel, make it dark or light, but we're gonna paint these red and try to get every single face you can. Zoom in, zoom around, look at everything, because if you miss anything, it's gonna show up as white. 
and it, it's going to suck because it won't look red. It'll look white or it'll have like a, a, a red square or a red triangle that it just didn't get hit with the vertex paint. So every single light that's red in this truck, we are going to paint red. Now back in Giants Editor, after we imported them back in, I'm going to bring up, import them in, and start applying some textures and show you how this is done. First, I like to start off with getting it right in front of your view, get the shader applied to it. It's usually the easiest one to do to make sure that you didn't vertex paint it wrong. So let's apply our shader, go to static light, and then scroll down to, well, we'll add it as a tangent there. That's always good because when we apply, when we these when we apply these textures, when you apply the normal map, you want that to show up. If you don't have tangents click, items will always be invisible. So I have my texture, and I'm going to remove the these two here, make them zero because then it'll actually show the image, and then apply a normal map. Done with that, let's go to our shader and we're gonna go down to the bottom where it says light control. And this is just to test it. You're gonna want these at zero when you make your mod, but you see right there, it's perfectly red and this one has a little bit of an issue. So I have to jump back into Blender and repaint this to make sure that one looks good. But obviously I missed a spot and didn't catch it. I left some of these bloopers in here to show you guys some silly things that can happen so you watch out for them but now our lights look great they're perfect they're working in game now we gotta do the top ones and as you can see you they work just great but you need to go through and do this for every single light that you have uh, now it will change with color when you start working with your blinkers and with your front lights you'll just instead of using red you'll use a yellow or an orange and then for your headlights just use white or maybe a little bit uh, a, a softer white if you're looking for that one right and two down when uv mapping blinkers after adding some light control to make it brighter you can actually hit play at the top toolbar up here and as long as you have no dynamic objects in your map you can view them flashing and adjust the flash measures as well Next, this bad boy needs some windows. So we're gonna jump back into Blender. And I got one issue with this window here is there only, there's only one face. So only one side, actually that's what that dark means. Only one side works. And how I go about fixing this really quick, I go over to modifiers and I find the solidify modifier. And I turn the thickness down to where it's barely just poking out the other side. And that's basically gonna give it a face on both sides. So you can view the glass from inside the cab and outside the cab. I'll click apply. And then we're gonna wanna UV map these. So there's an in-game texture that works absolutely perfect for dirt and windows that Giants already provides. I'll show you how to use that once we get there. But in order to use it, you're gonna have to UV map this. So I'll select one window at a time, put it about the center of the screen. After I got that one, I'll get the next window, try to get dead on with it so it's as even as possible. UV map from view, about the, dead, about the center of the screen, best I can there. What I'm gonna end up doing is scaling both of these side windows at the same time so then I can better fit them to the dirt map that is inside Giants Editor. That guy's pretty much already set up. We're gonna select these guys, move them down to the bottom, and we're gonna scale up inside the UV editor. So it's not on the outside of the bounds, but just barely there. I can get them even. It doesn't necessarily have to be even, but if you're doing two side windows, this is just a real simple way to make yourself some glass. I'm gonna scale these to fit and select it all. And then I'm going to press down on it so it goes UV map and it'll get dirty. But if you don't do that, it'll get dirty without just all the time. So that's made there. I'm going to auto smooth it. 
set up all my parameters I need to export it, make sure it's got a nice shader, hit export, and I should have some some uh, windows. Oh, always change your color just a little bit. Remember I told you guys, always change your color a little bit. Let's throw it in GE. Yeah, they're a little they're a little glossy there, but we're going to apply all the textures and if it's an issue, it's still glossy, then we'll Oh, edge split. So I edge splitted it. Re-import it back in. These are simple enough windows. I'm not worried about it. You can see the difference there between edge splitting or not. But once you apply the clear texture, it really doesn't matter too much. Uh, some windows this may matter. So you go in here and you're just going to use Giants clear texture. And then we're going to apply their gloss map for Windows Specular. And then we're going to apply the normal map. We're going to get the tangent warning. Go up, click the tangent. Okay. Now it is alpha blending. So this tells it that it's see-through, essentially. And we need to apply the shader now, the very last little part. Boop. So that's what it'll look like when it gets dirty. I have to redo that back window. If I've totally spaced that that window was there, so I need to go back into Blender and redo this whole process all over again. As you can see, even doing this a long time, I still make mistakes, but all of our windshields are good to go. Lights are good to go. <sighs> Man, we've made it so far on this video. I think you should hit that like and subscribe button. That will definitely give me the motivation to edit part two of this video. When we come back, I'll show you how to go from i3D to in-game mod just like you see on screen because it's not much further, boys. If you're interested in supporting my work or seeing what wild, crazy ideas I'm up to, check me on over at my Patreon page. Once part two of this video is done, you'll be able to find it right here, but I highly recommend you watch my modding companion series and get a good understanding of the XML and the basic fundamentals of playing around in the editor, which is our next part.